When an object is struck, it vibrates, and sound waves are radiated in all directions. By means of a simple apparatus, we can show that these waves exert a pressure. A flexible membrane is put in the path of the wave. This membrane vibrates according to the varying pressure of the sound waves from the gong. The vibration of the membrane is strong enough to move a light object resting against it. In one of the simplest forms of microphone, the membrane is substituted by a carbon disc. A non-conducting material is fastened to it. A hollowed out block of carbon is fixed so that it is not in electrical contact with the carbon disc. A cell is connected to the disc. And an apparatus to indicate electric current is connected to the block of carbon. and to the battery. The indicator does not move. To complete the electrical circuit, granules of carbon are poured into the hollow space in the carbon block. These come into loose contact with both the carbon block and the carbon, and the resistance which this contact offers varies with the slight movement of the granules. It is seen that a current flows. As the gong is struck, the carbon membrane vibrates and the contact is disturbed. These movements of the carbon granules allow more or less current to pass to the indicator. These variations correspond to the changes in the sound wave. This is a very primitive carbon microphone, and an adaptation of this type gives us the telephone. The varying electrical currents are conducted away to the remotest parts of the country. Now we will see another use for an improved type of carbon microphone. General the disturbance over the Azores is moving slowly northeast and tending to fill up. Weather will be fine or fair in most districts. Early morning mist locally. Further outlook. In time, other forms of microphones were devised to get greater sensitiveness and better quality. Let's see another method of making a microphone. Here is an ordinary bar magnet. It will attract pieces of iron and affect a small compass near it. The magnet acts in different directions as we go from one place to another. The region in which it has this effect is called the magnetic field, which varies in strength from point to point. We can map out this field quite roughly by using small compasses. The lines along which these needles set themselves are called lines of force. Near the ends of the magnet, it will be seen that the lines of force are concentrated. That is, the magnetic field is stronger at the end or in the neighborhood of the poles of the magnet. This is clearly shown by the amount of iron filings clinging to the poles of the magnet. Here, some lines of force have been shown diagrammatically. If the magnet is bent, it will be seen that the lines of force become concentrated near the poles. That is, the magnetic field is strengthened. Iron filings make this quite clear. Faraday found by experiment that a current can be produced by moving a magnet in and out of a coil of wire. Conversely, a coil of wire moving in a strong magnetic field also produces a current. This current varies according to the rate of speed of the coil as it cuts across the lines of force.
It has been found that the field between the poles can be concentrated at a particular place by the introduction of pieces of soft iron. Here is a variation of the horseshoe magnet as used in a modern microphone, the ribbon microphone. The strength of the field is increased locally by the addition of soft iron blocks. It will be remembered that this membrane responds to the sound waves which strike it. So will the metal ribbon. Here is a metal ribbon used in practice. The strip is very delicate and it must be placed within rigid support. This flexible strip placed between the poles of the magnet becomes capable as it moves of generating small electrical impulses. Its delicacy demands protection. A metal grill which allows the effect of the sound waves to pass through gives it this protection from rough usage. And we now have another type of modern microphone. This and other types have their special uses as the first link in a complicated chain from sound source to listener. Watch one at work in a film studio where it plays second fiddle to none bar the camera. Here the sound engineer and his crew place their microphone to the best advantage. The camera must be enclosed in a special lined compartment which will restrict noise of its mechanism to within its own limits. Incandescent lamps have mostly taken the place of a hissing arc lamp. Sneezing is tabooed. All this because the modern microphone is so sensitive. It must, however, never trespass into the precincts of the camera's vision. And yet it must not be too far away from the artist whose voice is being recorded. Because it is at some distance from the speaker, the microphone will receive only very weak sound waves, giving only weak electrical impulses, and an amplifier is therefore put just behind the microphone. 